Yeah, it's us here, aka the Craft Kid. And today we're doing some parenting hacks, so uh, let's check some of these out. Is your headlight just too annoying? It just keeps falling down onto your face. How annoying! It just keeps falling down. What you're gonna want is to grab yourself a big water jug, put your headlamp over it, and then flip it inside out. Honestly, this is probably how it got stretched out in the first place. Okay, guys, I figured that the Craftmas tree would be a great place to try this. So today we're gonna be exploring the Craftmas tree. We got our water bottle. And we got our headlamp here. This is what it looks like inside here, you know, pretty plain. Oh, let's go up a level, shall we? I just need to be completely immersed in darkness. Let's close this up. Oh, and even up one more level. Get on my level. Oh gosh, it's so dark down here. Okay, guys, we got our water bottle. We got our headlamp. I'm gonna go ahead and stick this bad boy on here and then just turn it on. I think I put it on wrong. How did they manage to get it? face down. Oh wow, that looks great. You know what? I'll just settle with this. Fantastic. Let me shove it inside of the handle. Wow, this is really illuminating it though. Now I'm gonna turn off my camera light. Oh wow! Guys, the Christmas tree has never felt so cozy before. You know, I've been thinking about doing a video where I spent 24 hours in here. So if you guys think I should do that, let me know down in the comments down below. But anyway guys, I'm gonna have to say that this hat absolutely works. How handy. I love it. You guys wanna see how dark it is in here without it? Oh my gosh. Oh, oh, oh. That is so dark. <laughs> okay, I'm getting out of here. So for this one, you're gonna want to steal a blanket. And then you fold it up just like this and just cut off all of that. I feel like this is wasting a blanket. Um, then you cut a bunch of slits at the bottom and boom, you got yourself a poncho. Wow! I would rather just have a blanket. Hey guys, you know what's even better than a brand new baby shark blanket? A brand new baby shark poncho. I'm gonna make this one a little bit different so that it fits me. Boop a boop. Yeah, I think my head should fit through that. And they cut the edges like this. I'm not the biggest fan of this, but I'll do it for the craft. Oh my gosh, these are falling apart so. Oh no! Oh my guys, are you seeing this? That's gonna just break off. What have I done? I'm not continuing this. This was. Oh no! They're all just falling off. Okay, well, you know, we might as well quit while we're ahead and see how our poncho turned out. Oh, yes, a perfect baby shark poncho. You know, minus the little rips at the bottom. Although, it doesn't look bad, it's just, it's just it keeps falling apart. And I could see that really not holding together well. So, here we go. Ready for this baby shark poncho? There we go! And now I have the ultimate baby shark poncho. I love it. Thumbs up. I'm gonna have to say that this one 100% works. I love my new poncho. The only downside is baby shark is upside down on my back. But besides that, it works great. 100% would recommend, especially with baby shark blanket. Okay guys, so here's how to make some fun waterproof shoes out of some old socks. So what you're gonna wanna do is grab some shoes, ironically, and some old socks. And put those socks right over those shoes. Then you just grab your trusty dusty glue guy. And just all over the sole of that bad boy. I'm just talking all up and down it, all around it, all up at the sides, all the top. Just waterproof that bad boy. Just make it into a shoe shape. There you go. And now you got some beautiful waterproof shoes. The new crops, everybody. I can't wait to make myself a pair. Okay, guys, so this one is simple, elegant, straight to the point. I really hope it works because Robbie needs a new pair of shoes. Water shoes, to be precise. So, uh, first, I guess I'm gonna get my sock. I'm using these ones because they have really bad holes in the heel. So just slide that right over. And there we go. Now we have a perfect foot for our shoe. Then we grab our hot glue gun, and then we just start putting hot glue all over this bad boy. I'm just gonna need mountains and mountains of just hot glue. I'm actually also gonna put some parchment paper on the bottom of this shoe. I should have done that while I was in there, now that I think about it. They didn't mention to do this in the craft, but I just don't want to damage my shoe. Give it a boot. that right on there. Reinsert our shoe. There we go. Yes, that is much, much better. Now we're just gonna go really crazy with the hot glue on the bottom. Maybe I should do some like... Ooh, I'm gonna open the window. Just because there's a lot of hot glue fumes here. I'm gonna do a little bit of a pattern. That way I can create grip, you know? I'm gonna need a second hot glue gun. Well, couldn't find the other glue gun, so we're just gonna really go ham and just do as much as we can at a time. Keep making these our traction. We're making our traction, but we're also just completely covering it in hot glue. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and let this cool down. And while I'm waiting for it to cool down, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one. One eternity later. Okay, guys, the hot glue is all cooled down, and this is how how they look so far. Let's uh, attempt to take out the shoe without damaging this. Here we go. Oh wow, it actually held its shape. 
That's pretty cool. Okay. The next one. And I didn't get any hot glue on my shoes. These look very interesting. Let's try them on. Oh yes, I love myself a good pair of boots. Especially waterproof boots. Ugh. There we go. Wow, this is really weird so far. Oh no. Time for the other one. This is interesting. They feel very floppy. Right off the bat, I should have probably maybe used uh, Tory shoes or something. But you know, oh, they're okay. So what I actually decided to do is I got this little thing of water. And we're going to see if it's actually waterproof. If the sock underneath my sock is wet, then it's definitely not waterproof. Here we go. Oh, that is so cold. Oh, it's definitely leaking in there. Okay. Oh, yes. Next one. Oh, no. Oh, that is leaking water. Oh, I can feel it. Okay. Are you guys ready for the results? Okay, taking these off. Oh. My sock is so wet right now. Well, guys, as waterproof boots, I'm going to have to say that these don't work. It might be kind of fun to wear them around the house, but I would definitely use shoes that are smaller than your foot size. But, uh, yeah, I don't know what to make of this. <laughs> So for this one, we're gonna need an aloe juice wrapper and a jar of pickles. And apparently, some boiling water. And it just shrink wraps onto the jar of pickles. Perfectly sealed. Okay guys, so here's our pickle jar, and here's our aloe vera juice. We only really need the label, but in order to get the label off, uh, I have to pour all this out. So I guess I might as well try some of this. It's aloe vera and pineapple. I mean, I love pineapple, but I'm not the biggest fan of uh, aloe vera juice. So let's see how this turns out. Bottoms up. No, no, I'm okay. I'm good. I don't want any more. There's just something about the consistency of this that I'm just not a fan of. <laughs> so instead of just pouring all this out, I'm going to attempt to just kind of cut a little section off. I prefer to have the aloe vera section because I think that it would be really funny to see that. I'll try my best to reserve that label. 100% natural real pulp. Ugh. Can you guys imagine pulp and pickles? I mean, does pickles already have pulp? Okay, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this. Come on. Okay, maybe I'll try a smaller piece of the label. How the heck did they get it off? I'm just gonna go ahead and pour it in this popcorn jug. Ooh. <laughs> it looks so slimy. Maybe if I just squeeze it. It came right off. Oh my gosh, that was way more simple than I thought it would be. I got what I came for. Okay guys, so I'm actually going to put it in this little tin. That way it collects any excess water that spills off. And I'm gonna use these little tweezers to hold it up. That way I'm not touching uh, you know, this molten plastic and boiling water. Okay guys, here's our boiling water. It's time to see if this actually works. <gasps> it's actually shrinking. Oh. oh my gosh, it's actually working. Oh my gosh, guys. <laughs> it's actually shrinking to the jar. Wow. I don't know how good this is for the pickles inside. It kind of left a little bit of excess right there. But other than that, this is actually sealed. Well guys, I'm gonna have to say that this one actually 100% works. That's really cool. <laughs> I just broke the seal. Oh, it smells like pickles. Like very warm pickles. Oh man, I really hope I didn't ruin my pickles. So here's how to make a fun charm. A lucky charm, if you will. So you just grab some plastic and just start drawing your design on it. You can even have a design in back of it to help you. And then you color it in, throw it in the oven, and boom! You have yourself a fun little lucky charm. Okay guys, so here's our piece of plastic. This is actually a little bin from a spring mix that I bought for my turtle Koopa. Just gonna cut some of this out, save this for later. And for the sake of making this a little easier to see, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on a white background. And now, we're gonna make our rainbow. There we go, that looks pretty good. Now we just have to draw in our colors. Boop, 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 boop. Then we gotta fill in the white of the clouds. And just to top it off, I'm gonna redo the outline. Okay, and it's all finished. Carefully take this off. Then we're gonna cut it out into the cloud rainbow shape. Okay, now before we put this in the oven, we have to go and poke a little hole. And there we go, the tiniest of holes. Get some parchment paper, put it on a tray, and into the oven it goes. So if I'm gonna craft and tell me what temperature to bake it in or how long to put it in. So I used my good friend Google. And Google said to put it in at 325 for about one minute. So in theory, it should almost be done. Oh, it tacoed into itself. I don't think it was supposed to do that. It says that it'll correct itself, but I don't trust it. I'll just leave it alone. Okay guys, I'll show you the results in about one minute, okay? But before we see the final results, guys, I need you guys to hit that like button. One like equals one potato life saved, so make sure to uh, click that like button and we'll save all the potatoes in the world. Let's see how it looks. And it looks like it is in fact still tacoing. I'm gonna try and pull it out, maybe I can fix it. Can I fix this? Oh, oh, I don't know if I can fix this. I'll go ahead and leave it in for a little bit longer. 
Okay, and here are the final results, guys. It definitely did not work as well as I would have planned. I actually left it in for about five minutes and it never flattened out. It just kind of tacoed like this. I tried to straighten it out and it just kind of kept curving. So I'm gonna have to say that this one doesn't work. Well, on to the next one. So for this one, we're gonna need some eggshells, crush those bad boys up, put them inside of a bag, get some flour, add some water, add some food coloring, <laughs> mix that bad boy up, just smush it all together, just really smush it. Cut off the tip of your bag and use it almost like a, a, a cream filling dispenser and uh, wait an hour. And now you got yourself a giant hunk of chalk. Wow, this giant chalk works way better than that little chalk. Okay guys, so first things first, I'm gonna need to separate a few eggs. Boobity boop. Six should do it. Okay, I went ahead and rinse these off a little bit. It didn't say to do that, but I just took the liberty of doing it anyway. Now we're gonna put all the eggshells inside of a plastic bag and just squish it up. I could think of to really make this nice and powdery, but it doesn't seem to really want to be breaking down. I think this should be good enough though. We're gonna go ahead and add some all-purpose flour and a little bit of hot water. Oh my gosh, the bag's leaking. I'm just gonna try my hardest to really mix this. Okay, I'm gonna have to use this. Oh, I forgot the food dye. I'm gonna try and make some bright blue chalk. Oh, that might be way too much food dye. Just close that up really good and mix it up in the bag. Oh my gosh, that is turning blue so quick. Oh, I should have wore gloves. Oh, I'm gonna regret this. I already know it. Well, that's some very blue chalk mixture. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the tip, and grab a paper towel roll, and hopefully all of it should just kind of stay in the bottom and not leak out the sides. It feels like a thick enough mixture to where I think I should be okay. This smells very odd right now. Pushing that clay down a little bit. Now I'm gonna let this dry and sit overnight. I will see you guys tomorrow. Hopefully my hands are not permanently dyed blue. One eternity later. Okay guys, it's been about 24 hours. It still feels a little bit wet, but I'm gonna go ahead and try and tear this apart without breaking it. Okay, let's see how this turns out. Uh, okay, it's not holding up very well. This looks disgusting. It's definitely not hard. It said in the video to only do eight hours. I let it do 24. Okay, I guess it's time for me to use it as chalk now. Um, here we go. Oh, God. Uh, uh. It's just falling apart in my hands. Guys, I'm not really feeling this chalk. I'm gonna have to say that this one doesn't work. Man, and I just got a lot of the blue dye off my hands. Ugh. I'm not exactly sure what this contraption is that she made. I guess if you need something, uh, you're good forever. For this life hack, we're gonna want to put a stapler on the wall. Okay. <laughs> I don't understand what's happening. It's time for me to never lose my stapler again. I lose it in that drawer all the time. Grab our hot glue gun. Now I just grab my stapler and just put on a bunch of hot glue. Perfect. Now I just stick this bad boy to the wall. It's looking pretty solid, pretty on there. And then if I ever need to change the staples, Oh gosh. Let's try and staple some things together really quick. Oh, oh man, I really gotta staple my blue and yellow sheets together. Really important here. Uh, just put that in there. Here we go, give it a good old wackaroonie. Oh, that kind of worked. Uh, we'll try it again. I mean, my stapler is in fact broken because I hit it too hard, uh, but overall, I think the idea actually works. If you mind your own business and you look at your uh, cap and you're like, oh no, it turns out you put your pen inside your shirt the whole time. Now you have a crazy stain there. You should've wore a pocket protector, TBH. But what you're gonna wanna do is get some masking tape, lay it out on your shirt, and just paint your shirt blue. <laughs> Duh. Peel away the masking tape, get yourself a fine ruler like this, paint on the edge, try to write down your shirt, and uh, now you have a paper shirt with a little ink blot. Never, who's gonna know? Nobody's gonna know. They're gonna know. I guess we have to try this one to find out if it actually works. Okay guys, so here's our plain white tea. Not to be confused with the band, plain white teas. Great band, I love your music. If you guys are watching this, senpai notice me. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and grab some tape and then we're gonna make our line straight across. Now we're gonna get a bit of blue paint and just fill in the lines. Just gonna be really careful to just dab it on there. Now that it's dry, we're gonna take all the tape off. So satisfying. Oh, 
Okay, now we got some pretty neat lines. I messed up only a couple places, so that's fine. Now I'm gonna get some red paint and put it on this ruler. Just carefully dab it on there, just like this. Okay, now we're gonna carefully add the red line. And we slide. Oh, I feel like my table's not even. It didn't get any of the red on there. I almost feel like I should have just drew the red line myself because I feel like that would have been a lot more even, but that's okay. I'm definitely not really a fan of that method. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill it all in with a paintbrush. Ugh, the line's so thick down here. This is looking pretty good. Let's try it on. Boobity boo. Oh man, I feel like college ruled paper. Could you guys see this being sold at Hot Topic? Dude, this is great. This is sick. Remember they were doing like the cup shirts? So you guys know what I'm talking about. You see this design, right? But yeah, I mean, it feels topical for school. You could always like write notes on it. This could be fun. Have your friends write all sorts of fun messages on you. You could even do it on the back and do the same thing. Well guys, I guess I'm gonna have to say that this actually works. I'd say it's actually a pretty cool idea. Guys, are you tired of just picking up all your stuff off the beach and then just completely running out of space in your hands to hold everything? Oh man, this happens to me all the time. Well, here's an easy solution. Grab yourself a towel, put some hot glue on it just like that. Grab another towel, hot glue that bad boy together, hot glue some rope onto it, and bam, now you got yourself a neat little uh, storage compartment for your towel. Wow, a perfect little towel bag. Just stores everything in one. Here are our towels, here's our rope. Just gonna go ahead and open this bad boy up. Boop, boop, boop. Then we're gonna lay our little towel out on top of it. Looks good. I'm actually gonna twist this. That's much better. Now that our hot glue gun's heated up, we just outline it with hot glue. I'm gonna do it half at a time because honestly, I don't think I'd be able to do the entire thing with hot glue. It would have solidified by the time I do the entire thing. Carefully put that together. I feel like sewing this together would probably be a better move. But you know, easy and convenient way to sew, okay? And I kinda wanna make a little divider for my stuff, so I'm gonna go about halfway up. This will also help reinforce it a little bit. That way the rest of the towel will just fit right in. There there we go. And now we add our rope. Casually make it go over like this. I'm gonna make a little fancy knot at the end just because I'm a fancy guy. There we go. I forget what kind of knot this is, but it's a, uh, I feel like I might've actually tied this incorrectly. Oh, there we go. Now we have a perfect little square knot. Square knot at the bottom, outline this bad boy. And we just go ahead and hot glue the entire thing down. And not untied. It's okay, I'll just leave it untied. It's a fancy thing, okay? I just got hot glue all over the towel. What have I done? I don't know if this hot glue will actually hold this towel very well, if I'm being totally honest. But you know, as I've said many a time before, Five Minute Crafts has never let me down before. And I truly trust them with every aspect of my life. In fact, I only trust things that I see on the internet. If it's not on the internet, I don't trust it. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and let this cool down for a little bit. Oh, oh, oh! Okay, I'm gonna let this cool down for a little bit and then I'll try this bad boy out. Okay guys, our bag's all cooled down. So let's try it as a towel first. Oh wait, I'll flip it over. Oh, even better. Look at this. It's a perfect relaxing towel spot. Just imagine me on the beach having a great time, you know, just chilling out on my towel. And now I'm like, oh, I'm so done with this. So once I'm done with my fantasy, I just uh, flip it all over. I grab my things. Uh, wait, I don't have any things. Um, give me a second. I need to find some things. Uh, the, the water bottle. Yes, that's a thing. Let's see. Uh, oh, my hat. My hat's also a thing. So we just grab our things and shove them in our new bag. Yes, get in there. Oh, yes. All my things are nice and secure in my bag. Then I just flip my towel over and shove it in the little compartment. Boom. And now I have myself a stylish bag. Yeah, guys, if this doesn't work, I don't even know what the heck does work. Well, guys, I guess I'm gonna have to say that this one 100% works. And it's double-sided, multi-usable, multi-purpose, that's what the word I was saying. Five Minute Crafts. You did it again. Okay guys, is your scarf just way too long? Like you just keep stepping on it? What you can do is take a little rubber band and then you make it into a bow. Oh wow, double bow. And now it's a perfect length. Okay guys, so here is our scarf, which is just uh, so long, it doesn't even fit in the frame. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna go ahead and make some bows. This is pretty easy peasy. I got a tie-dye Scooby-Doo scarf for this. So apparently you just fold it over like that, grab your rubber band, Boobity -boo. Rubber band that together, and then we do the other side. 
Boom, and now you have a bow. Now let's do the other side. Boom, we got ourselves two bows. Let's try this bad boy on. Okay, let's see how this looks on me. I love tie-dye, it's one of my favorite things to wear. So the Scooby-Doo tie-dye scarf is the perfect accessory to anything I wear, really. These are how the bows turned out. They're a little floppy, definitely didn't turn out as good as hers, but overall, I'm gonna have to say that this one kind of works. It's definitely shorter and it looks snazzy on me, okay? I love it, great job, Five Minute Crafts. Okay guys, let me paint the scene for you. You are at your grandma's house and you're just running around and you hit your leg on a corner. And they're like, oh my gosh, your poor leg. So what you're gonna do is grab your uh, trusty 3D pen and just draw all around that sharp corner. You can make a design like this hard. It doesn't really matter, I don't think it does. But I'll do the hard anyway. And there you go, a now safe corner. But does it actually work? Okay guys, so here's my corner that is just uh, so sharp. So every time I bump into this thing, I just get a huge bruise. So I think it's about time for me to cover this bad boy up with some uh, 3D pen. And stuff. So here we go. I have complete faith in you, Five Minute Crafts, and I believe that this will work swimmingly, and I will never hurt myself ever again on this darn dirty safety hazard. 3D pens really take a while to just work, and I kind of suck at using them, so I'm starting to- Ah, oh, that's so hot! Okay, interesting, so I don't actually have to hold it. Okay, never mind. Okay. Two thousand years later. I feel like this is gonna take a while. It's very, very slow. So I guess it's time for a good old fashioned time lapse. Oh yes, and there we have it. A perfect functional piece of art. It is elegant like a spider's web, but it's also sophisticated like something sophisticated. Anyway, does it still hurt when I bump my hand? Ah! Oh God, oh gosh, oh. Ow, that hurt. Um, no, not at all. It works great, and uh, I guess I'm gonna have to say that this one, this one actually works. Fantastic. <laughs> okay guys, you gotta pour your orange juice inside a bottle, but it just gets everywhere. Well, what you can do is grab yourself a straw and pour it directly on the straw. And now, you don't even need a funnel. Pour it right in. Divide the laws of gravity. Okay, let's just try it. Okay guys, so here's our water bottle, and here's the container I'm gonna be putting in it. Uh, in the meantime. Boobity boom. And then just to simplify all this, I'm gonna get some food dye and just uh, drop that right in there. Ooh, guys, it's so satisfying. You wanna shake it or stir? Okay, that looks pretty good. So first, we'll go ahead and try the normal method of pouring water into the bottle. You ready? Very carefully, very carefully. that much in, but I accidentally spilled this much of it. We got it this much just by pouring it normal with my basic pouring skills. Now let's try the straw method. For the sake of simplicity, I'm gonna go ahead and top this bad boy off. Clean up any residue I may have uh, left over from the previous experiment. Let me pour back in. We have a controlled environment, and that's what's important here. Just slap our straw right in. Okay, guys, you ready for this? Here we go. Oh. Oh. I've already spilled a lot. I've already spilled so much. I've already made so many mistakes. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay, I see you. Oh, it's going around the straw. Oh no! Oh gosh. Oh my gosh, I'm so close. <laughs> And with, uh, you know, my newfound uh, pouring method. This is how much we spilled, and this is how much we actually got into. I actually have to take this off. There we go. That is definitely less than how much I did with my, you know, regular pouring skills. My skills that I've acquired out of the 27 years I've been alive. So I guess with this one, I guess I'm gonna have to say, with some practice, uh, it does work, but is it as effective as if you just, you know, poured it regular? I don't know. I mean, it really depends on your skill level. I feel like this is harder. So I'm gonna have to say that this one, Kind of works. Hey guys, remember that plastic charm that we made a few minutes ago that I absolutely loved? Turns out you can make one with a little handprint too. All you gotta do is get some acrylic paint, put it right on there, put a, put a little hole, and shove this bad boy in the oven too. And now you have a perfect little hand of a charm. You know what? I thought this one was cute, so I'm gonna try it with Benj. <laughs> Just kidding, guys. Uh, fun fact: I actually record these before I do the actual craft. And since we know that this one doesn't work, I'm actually gonna skip this Which one. Which is kind of a bummer because I was 
really looking forward Making to- Making a little paw print charm with my dog, Bench. It's okay, he's really tired right now. I don't think he'd want to be in a video anyway. Guys, are you tired of your kid just drawing all over all the paper? And you just have so many other drawings all the place. You're not, so, what are you supposed to do, keep them all? Do you keep all your kids' drawings? Uh, no. What you're gonna wanna do is grab yourself a clear baking dish, put your coloring book paper inside of it, flip it over, and now they can draw on it all they want, and then when you're done, you just wipe it off. And then they can keep coloring in the same thing over and over. <laughs> so, I don't actually have a coloring book on hand, so I'm gonna have to make my own special drawing. Let's see, what can I draw here? Let's do a Toby. Oh, yes. The true essence of Toby. And maybe a drill? Let's see, what else can we draw? Oh, I got it! An axe! The perfect model. That's perfect. Well, we don't need this anymore. So now we grab ourselves a clear baking sheet and simply tape it inside. Okay, now we're gonna flip this bad boy over. And now we have ourselves a reusable drawing surface. Let's get to it. So we're gonna go ahead and draw Toby Green. A deep, dark mouth that seems to go on forever. A never-ending void, if you will. Is my mouth actually that scary? Oh! Oh! Toby, close that mouth. Yes, it is. Oh! Oh, uh, okay. Let's color in this axe. Oh, yes, a red axe with a black handle. And we can't forget about the Mixatron. Well, guys, this turned out really good. I mean, I kind of like how this works, but does it erase? We're just gonna grab a napkin and just... Oh, it definitely does not erase. I'm gonna go ahead and spray a little bit of water. Oh, and there we go. Good as new. Now I can draw all over again. Just really disregard all my previous work. Well, guys, I'm gonna have to say that this one actually works. Okay, guys, so you're at the park and you got a freaking splinter. Oh! Well, what you're gonna wanna do is grab a syringe thing and just suck that thing right out. And boom, no more splinter. And I'm not talking about splinter from the Ninja Turtles. I'm talking about splinter as in piece of wood. Anyway, let's try this life hack. Okay, guys, so I don't really want to just stick a piece of wood in my hands because, uh, frankly, they've been through enough today. So instead, I'm going to use some of this Canadian bacon, and I'm just going to pretend that this is human flesh. Then I'm going to grab a toothpick, and I'm just going to really get splinters out of it. Just really rub it into our hand. Hopefully we get a nice and big one. There we go. That's a good size splinter. Shove it right in there. Okay, guys, so here's our splinter. Now I'm going to go ahead and take our syringe and simply put it to our skin and try and suck out the splinter. The splinter fell through. Oh no. Okay, I'll try it again. Firmly around the splinter and... I mean, he took it out. Well guys, I guess I'm gonna have to say that this one actually kind of works. Okay guys, here's a fun way to uh, share snacks with your desk roommate person. I guess neighbor it would be? What you're gonna wanna do is get your bag of chips and a pencil. Stab it right through that bad boy and just hang it between your desk. And boom, you got a hidden snack compartment for you and your best mates to share. It's a perfect plan. It's a perfect way to sneak food into class. But does it actually work? Well, we're gonna have to find out, aren't we? Okay guys, did you guys know that they make a chip version of the Doritos Locos Tacos? I had no idea. The Doritos Nacho Cheese flavored chips look absolutely delicious. Wow. So they're basically like the shell, but cut into little square shapes. Please ignore the giant glowing ball behind me. I wasn't expecting you guys to see this part. It's delicious. But this bag is kind of useless. It doesn't just hover between two desks. Here, watch, I'll show you. Here are our two desks. What? I am so incredibly saddened about this. I don't know why this would have happened. I'm really sorry, Doritos Locos Chips. You won't die in vain. <laughs> There's a lot of dog hair on the floor. Gross. So now we're gonna try five minute crabs. Easy solution. Just go ahead and stab the pencil through the bag on both sides. Pop, pop. Now it's completely, it ripped the bag. <laughs> My chips are getting so broken right now. I'll try it again with another hole, and then here's another one. Okay, looking good. Now we're gonna put it between our desk. I'm gonna try moving them a little closer. Uh, oh no! Oh, the fire extinguisher. Okay guys, so we're between our two desks. Maybe a little bit closer. Uh, it's perfect! Now I'm gonna retrieve a chip. And the bag broke again. Well guys, I guess I'm just gonna have to say that this one doesn't work. Which is really unfortunate, because I was just so excited 
to share chips with my neighbor. Maybe it would be a better idea if I just uh, went next door and asked him. Anyway, guys, it doesn't work. Okay, guys, so you come in from a winter storm and you are just so covered in snow and your boots are just frozen and they have all this uh, water in them because you got snow in them and it's just melted down. It's just a mess. So now what are you gonna do? You're gonna go ahead and put some newspaper inside your shoes. Put them on their sides, put some more newspaper on top of them, just completely cover them in newspaper. And then it'll draw the water out of them. And boom, your shoes are good as new. Nice and dry. Okay guys, so uh, here's our shoes. And the first thing that we're gonna wanna do with these bad boys is uh, get them nice and wet. They are very, very dirty. I haven't washed these in a very long time. These were my daily driver shoes. I'm more of a boot man now. But you know what? Maybe if I clean these up, I might like them again. But now, I have to wait for them to dry. So since I have two shoes, I'm gonna go ahead and use one with the newspaper method and one without. That way we know which method truly works. Does air drying work? I'm putting newspaper in it. A guy in an airport once told me to actually fill my shoes up with newspaper. So, I mean, I would trust him over anything. Just completely wrap it around all in newspaper. These are looking pretty good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and let them sit for a little bit and we'll see which one dries first. Okay guys, so these have been sitting for about four hours. Let's see. Oh my gosh, that newspaper is so wet. Oh my god, look how wet that is. Let me check this one first. Whoa! Oh no. So the one without the newspaper, really wet. The one with the newspaper, it's definitely slightly more dry. It's still a little bit damp, but you know what? I think I'm gonna have to say that this one actually works. Look at all the moisture that that newspaper absorbed. Good job. Okay guys, so you're on the toilet, but you just don't know how to put your phone. It keeps falling whenever you put it on your knee. So what are you gonna do? Just grab a hair tie and just uh, grab more hair ties. <laughs> hair tie all the hair ties together to make one Omega Shenron hair tie. Tie. And then you put your phone through that hair tie. And then, uh, you know, there you go. You got yourself a phone holder while you're, you know, doing your business. Okay, guys, this is a simple and elegant solution to an everyday problem that I surely have. I'm just always sitting down and I drop my phone all the time. It's been a nuisance in my life since day one. And I'm glad that this is a life hack that is a good solution. So we just put our phone right in there. There we go. Yeah, that looks pretty secure now. Let's try this on our leg. Okay, guys, here's a little point of view for you. Here's my leg, and I'm just, you know, here's without strapping it to it. Oh my gosh, I'm just hanging out. Oh, well, I'm just, ooh, I dropped my phone! Can I crack my screen? Oh, it's safe for now. But let's try this little rubber band hack. Pull that right over, smack it on there, and there we go. You know, I'm just gonna be doing my thing. Look at that. I can shake my leg all around. Oh yes, this phone is truly not going anywhere. I can bounce my knee nervously. I can whack my leg against the desk. I can even sweep it off if I want to, and this thing's not going anywhere. Well, guys, I guess I'm gonna have to say that this one absolutely works. An elegant solution to an everyday problem. Now, that's what I call a good five-minute craft. I don't know what this does exactly, but apparently wrapping tinfoil around your feet makes great shoes. Yeah, I don't know what good this really does. Uh... <laughs> I'm so excited to be from the future. I'm excited to be a spaceman. I'm excited to, oh man, I just messed up my tin foil. I'm excited to do that too. What did I just do? Just reapply it to my feet. Oh yes, looking really good. Oh God, Ugh. I'll just do it like this. I got new tin foil boots. I'm from the future. I'm ready to walk on the moon. I am a spaceman. And you know what? Yeah, I'll do the other one. I'll be a trendsetter. We saw it here first, guys. Well, I guess technically we saw it from Five Minute Crafts first. But you saw it here second, guys. If people start wearing tin foil of shoes, just know you saw it here second. What I'm saying is, tin foil boots, this is the way of the future, okay? That's what I'm saying. Who needs to pay hundreds of dollars for custom boots when you got tin foil? Custom, high quality, 100% made in America boots, okay? Well, is the tin foil made in America? I actually don't know. It was crafted in America, and that's all that matters. I, I'll say it was uh, made in America, not 100%. Anyway, well guys, I guess we're gonna have to say that these boots 
absolutely work. Look at what high quality, high fashion I am. These are the best boots I've ever owned. Guys, is your sidewalk chalk just not good? Well, here's how to easily improve it. You just dunk it in water. Let it soak up a little bit, and now it should go right on there. Look how silky smooth that chalk is just going on. That looks like some very fresh chalk. Because it's definitely filled in a lot better. So it's pretty cold and windy outside, so I'm gonna do this one fast. So first we're gonna try our basic chalk. This chalk has not been soaked in water. Here we go. Move it, move. And that's my name, guys! Okay, that looks pretty good. Now we're gonna try these chalks that I've been letting soak in water for a few hours. Oh my gosh, you can hear them screaming. Can you guys hear that? They're like, no, we're drowning! Oh, these guys are dead now. Let's see if it worked any better. Oh! Ah! Oh, I scraped my finger because I broke it. Wow. Oh, wow, that looks so cool. It changes color. <gasps> Okay. I mean, it definitely fills it in a little bit more. Well, guys, I'm gonna have to say that this one actually works. So you're trying to, this is how to get your kids to do their chores. Or the intern to actually do his work. <laughs> hey, I need you to step out of the room so I can learn how to manipulate you. <laughs> what was that face? No, go back, bro. What was that face? Honestly, this is you. <gasps> is it? Ah, are you saying have a big That's you. Face? That's you. Anyway, comment down below if you think my face is that round. So you're just getting super mad at your kid because- <gasps> What? Look at their face! <laughs> no, that's you. That's literally you. Uh -huh. So you get mad at them and then their kid's like, Hey, I'm gonna mess everything up. <laughs> no <More> face. <laughs> what the face? Ah! <laughs> what even? <laughs> And you just get mad at them. You, I would get mad too if my kid was just like, no, I'm not gonna do anything. Yeah, I mean, okay, mate, this is the only time we're getting mad makes sense. No, so this is what you're supposed to do, Michael. Help. No! no. <laughs> oh, I have an idea. So you're gonna grab some cardboard? <gasps> oh, You've done, now that, oh, I have done this one. You've done this to me, it works. If you guys want to watch that video, you can click right here. No, it's over here. It's over there? It's over here. You can click over there. But yeah, I've totally done this one on the on the intern. I actually remember doing this life hack and it was quite a good one. And uh, let's step back and really just try and reminisce on this life hack. Here you go, intern. I made this for you. This is how you make the perfect fold every time. Bobby, that's impossible. So, boop, boop, and then you fold it like that, okay? That is the proper way to fold a shirt. If you want me to fold it that way, I can. Okay, I'll see you later. Oh, wow, intern. These look fantastic. Oh, okay guys, thanks so much for watching the video. If you liked it, make sure to give it a big old thumbs up or something like this fire right down there. If you guys wanna watch even more Robbie and Intern videos, I actually have an entire playlist that you can watch right here. Okay guys, love you so much, I'll see you guys again real soon. Peace, love, and Wi-Fi. Oh, we're not, okay, bye.